Welcome to the Heidi Thorne Show. I'm your host, Heidi Thorne, and in this podcast, I share my real-world self-publishing and small business experience with you. Before we get started, I just want to remind you to like, comment, share, follow, and subscribe. Now let's get on with today's show. My author friend and YouTuber, Barrett Laurie, asked how often you should clean up your email subscriber list. Let's talk about what an email list cleanup is, why you might want to do it, and how and when to do it. What is an email list cleanup? An email list cleanup, sometimes called scrubbing, is the process of weeding out dormant subscribers who don't open or click on your email campaigns. Why should you do an email list cleanup? I can say with a pretty high degree of confidence that the majority of the subscribers on your email list are dormant duds. All you need to do is look at your email list open rate. Email marketing service MailChimp's benchmark stats for October 2019 show that across 45 plus industries, average open rates are 21.33% of delivered emails. Go ahead, look at your email marketing service provider's reports for your email campaigns. Your open rate is probably close to that. Mine is, open rates have been declining for years. Note that for very small lists, you might see your open rates are higher. This is not an indication that you are doing better than the majority of email marketers. Rather, this is due to the problem of small sample statistics, which can skew this number higher. What these open rate stats mean is that up to 80% of your email list subscribers could be dormant duds. If your email marketing service charges you based on emails sent, continuing to send to these non-performing subscribers could be wasting your money, in addition to giving you the false impression that you are reaching a lot of people. So how do you do an email list cleanup? Doing an email list cleanup usually involves sending an email to all or just your dormant subscribers, asking them if they wish to stay on your list. When I've done cleanups, I send a couple of emails before removing subscribers who don't open the first cleanup email. They may have missed the first one. The in case you missed it email gives them another opportunity to stay with you. What I've usually done is create a new cleaned up list that just includes those who actively opt in to the new list. This accomplishes two things. You'll know that these people really want to be on your list, and you'll also have a record that they voluntarily opted in to be on your list, which will help keep you compliant with both can spam and GDPR email regulations. On a related note about email regulations, make sure that you are sending emails from a respected email marketing provider, such as uh, MailChimp, Constant Contact, Aweber, ConvertKit, HubSpot, Vertical Response, and others. Do your research to make sure that those you are considering are compliant with both can spam and GDPR data protection regulations. Here's a big email list cleanup don't. Don't send an email that says, if I don't hear from you, I'll presume you want to stay on my list. I saw a lot of small business people doing that in 2018 when the European Union's GDPR or General Data Protection Regulations went into effect. They were either too lazy or too scared of losing email subscribers to do a necessary cleanup to be compliant. Once the cleanup is done, only use the new list from there forward. What I've also seen small businesses do is keep an old list going, again, because they're too afraid or too lazy to do a cleanup. But they also send to the new list too. In this case, some subscribers may receive two emails for every campaign. Not only could this be costly if they're charged per email sent, it's annoying for your subscribers and could lead to more unsubscribes. When should you do an email list cleanup? For small lists of up to, let's say, a few thousand subscribers, uh, as many authors have, I wouldn't suggest doing an email list cleanup more than maybe every three years or so at minimum. 
This allows you to get a longitudinal look at your list performance over time before making decisions about it. It also gives your subscribers some time to get used to receiving content from you. Large marketers may do more frequent cleanups, maybe even annually. They do A-B split testing and more sophisticated marketing analysis. They have large samples, sometimes in the tens or hundreds of thousands of subscribers, not to mention the financial resources to make it worth their while. But for most small businesses and authors, this is not valuable because, again, of the small sampling statistical problem, which will not provide valuable insight. The other situation when a cleanup should be done is when changing email marketing providers. For example, going from MailChimp to Constant Contact. Many email marketing providers allow you to upload an existing email list if you confirm that all subscribers have legitimately opted in. If the list isn't compliant, you'll be on the hook for that, not the email provider. When you change provider, you can send an email to all your existing subscribers on the original list telling them that they'll need to opt in to the new list that you're creating. In light of tightening regulations such as GDPR in the European Union, which applies even if you're in the United States and sending to EU subscribers, I'm more inclined to suggest that you send invites to subscribers to opt into the new list with the new provider instead of uploading an existing list. Then you have trackable consent. The other change which would precipitate an email list cleanup would be when your business dramatically changes, making your new emails irrelevant to your existing subscribers. Here's how I lost almost 90% of my email list subscribers with cleanups. I started email marketing in 2005. My list was in the 500 subscriber range, consisting mainly of potential advertising and marketing clients for my promotional products business and my newspaper advertising business uh, that served the contracting market. I was using vertical response for my email provider. Their services were great for what I needed at that time. I was regularly getting decent open rates of you know 30 to 40 percent which was good then in 2012 the newspaper advertising business i had been pursuing for 15 plus years ended after the newspaper's owners died and the business was closed i still had the promotional product side of the business that many of my newspaper clients used so my emails were relevant for many of my subscribers, even though the newspaper was gone. But more change was coming. Around 2010, I had started to get very active in the social media and blogging scene and shifted my focus to talking about online marketing and self-publishing topics. My new social media and blogger friends were very impressed with A. Weber's email marketing services because of the service's great integrations. With my change in focus, I decided that it was time to clean up my email list and move my email marketing provider to A. Weber. With that shift to A. Weber, I sent emails to my existing subscribers asking them to opt in to my new list on the new platform. I was clear about what I would be talking about in future emails so that the subscribers could decide if they really wanted these emails. I knew that there would be a big drop since the new emails might be irrelevant for many of my existing subscribers, as well as the inevitable fall off that would occur due to the open rate situation. But it was painful, even though I understood these realities. My list shrunk to between 100 to 125, if I remember right. That's a 75% email subscriber loss. This new online marketing focused audience wasn't as high performing as my newspaper advertisers. In this new market, I was entering a very competitive space. My open rates were dropping due to competition for this topic, 
as well as email marketing open rates were dropping overall. With a lower reach and effectiveness for my emails, and since AWeber had a monthly fee at that time, now they have a free program for small marketers. Around 2016, I decided to shift my email provider once again uh, to MailChimp for their free program. As you can guess, I lost another chunk of my list. Then in 2018, to comply with new GDPR regulations, I did another cleanup effort, which shrunk my list to about 10% of its original size. The lesson to be learned here is that you should be strategic with your email list cleanup efforts, realizing that the vanity metrics of a large, but largely underperforming email list will suffer. While my current list size is not where I'd like it to be, I'm not afraid to cut out the non-performing parts of my marketing. Are you? I hope you found that helpful. And if you did, please rate, review, and subscribe to The Heidi Thorne Show on whatever podcast app you like to use. I'm on all the major ones, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you like the YouTube video better, you just have to subscribe to my Heidi Thorne YouTube channel and turn on the notification bell so that you get an alert when a new video is up. I would appreciate it if you would share the audio or the video with your friends on social media. My self-published books are available on Amazon, Audible, and Apple Books. All you have to do is search for my name, Heidi Thorne, on any one of those sites, and a list of all available titles will come up. If you'd like to connect with me, my website is HeidiThorne.com, and I am most active on the social channels of Instagram and TikTok at, at Heidi Thorne. Thank you so much for listening and for your support. I'll look forward to talking with you again in the next episode, and in the meantime, have a great day.